All praises, all praises, all praises to the heavenly, holy, almighty creator of infinity, eternity, the universe, the stars, the earth, the mountains, the oceans, the seas, the valleys, the clouds, all creeping things, humanity, and all there is. This is revelations.unveiled.detroit. Hello, family. We are back together again where I stand before you in the greatest of honor, humility, privilege, and pleasure to make presentation. And we are back at the revelations.unveiled.detroit den. Please come on in. Step up to the threshold of transition. Surrender your common carnality. Expose your cranial universe. Bear forth your soul so that we may touch the heat and the fire of the word and the heavenly, holy, cosmic communication and information of the nation. All praises. And to the 12 tribes scattered abroad, wherever you may sojourn on planet Earth, you know I love you and my continuous petition and prayer for your care and safety. And to my brothers and sisters of the world, the pending Israelites, those who call themselves the Melodated and Moors, the original man and children of God, the sovereigns and sojourners, the copper color, the colored and people of color, the aboriginals and indigenous, the natives, Negroes and niggas, the Afro African Americans and blacks, the descendants of slaves and those conquered and colonized. Oh yes, and we are blessed. This is what we confess as we assemble in our consensual harmony and our coordinated concern compare and compassion for the brothers and sisters of the world as we take a gaze at the revelations that unveiled Dr. Detroit then via your place and just bask in the heat and the warmth of the love of the brothers and the sisters as we clench in our embrace of eternity as we stare into the eyes and the souls of our brother and sister beings of infinity we are the children of the light we will be bright and shine bright in the night all praises and family we are continuing on the expansion and the elevation and the escalation of our knowledge of the holy nation as we embark on the initiation of the reconciliation back to the holy covenant and tonight we are continuing in the slave trade the judean diaspora part four and we will be continuing to peel back those layers of the missing history of our captivity where it is said to us we did not exist before we came to the shores of this continent of confusion the boldness of babylon which we call sodom and egypt the united states of america and we will be resuming our exercise and examination in the book from Babylon to Timbuktu by brother Dr. Rudolph R. Windsor as he continues to grace us with that light to blow away the darkness of that ignorance of our existence. And we shall begin at the revelations.unveil.detroit channel standards in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Followed by our second heavenly eternal standard in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 8 in reference to the holy anointed Messiah, the Redeemer, the wonderful, the Savior, the King of Israel, whom the world refers to as Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Oh yes, family, as we partake of the warmth 
in the softness of the place. We shall find our space and clench the hands of our neighbor as we become quiet and still so that we may receive, so that we may perceive and believe. And we will be continuing in the migration of the nation in the diaspora of the Judeans, which were the three tribes of Israel consisting of the royal tribe of Judah, the priest tribe of Levi, and the tribe of Benjamin, as they fled persecution from the homeland in 70 AD and filtered into the interiors of the land of Ham, so-called Africa today. And we followed those migratory routes down the eastern corner through Ethiopia into the Sudan, all the way down into Uganda. And we followed the pattern going north across Tunisia and Libya and Morocco and Algeria and Mauritania. And we explored the kingdoms of Songhai in the Ghanaian states. And we looked at the filtration down from the sub, below the sub-Saharan territories as the Judeans continue to flee Roman persecution and war and slavery. And now they're coming into an area of the central beltway of Africa along the Niger River um, from the coasts of Ethiopia all the way to the western coasts of the Atlantic Ocean. And in this episode, we will explore a major figure of the diaspora, and we will be exposed to the cultures and the heritage and the politics of the time. And we begin in the book, From Babylon to Timbuktu, Eldad the Danite. In the ninth century, a black African Hebrew arrived in the city of Cairo in Algeria. And this city was one of the famous Talmudic schools. The name of this Hebrew was Eldad the Danite. He told a credible story of a Hebrew empire south of the Sahara in the Western Sudan. According to Eldad the Danite, The Hebrews in the interior of Africa spoke a Phoenician Hebraic language mixed with Arabic. They had a religion which had come down from Moses, a Hebrew emperor. It was believed that this emperor was named Tultan or Bolatan. Eldad said that the people of this tribe had fled from the kingdom of Israel after Sennacherib the Assyrian had subdued it and that other Israelite tribes such as Naphtali, Gad, and Asher were in the land from which he came. He told of the laws of Moses which they followed, the complete series of scriptures except Esther and Lamentations. He did not speak of the legal works that were produced in Babylon and Palestine after the destruction of the first temple of which the Algerian Jews had a knowledge. These extraordinary works were the Mishnah and the Talmud. Eldad displayed as evidence some ceremony pertaining to the slaughtering of animals for food. It was written in Hebrew with an Arabic tinge, but Eldad claimed that he knew no other language than Hebrew. In regards to Eldad's story, the Gaon, head of the Jews, assured the people that the story was credible. We are grateful for the travels and researches of Nahum Schlotz, who wrote in the earlier part of the 20th century. He said, For many years, the author of this book has been gathering material for a history of the Judean migrations 
into the Sahara and the Sudan. One part of his work is already done. The establishing of the authenticity of these migrations to the writings of the Arabs and the oral traditions of the country, he can now add the archeological evidence furnished by the ruins of ancient Judean cities in the Sahara and the Sudan, and the documentary evidence of the Hebrew inscriptions like those of Tuat, which date from the 13th and 14th centuries. It is now an established fact that Ghana was a black Hebrew state and this and at this juncture, I shall continue my writings concerning the Za dynasty of Ghana. The 15th Za prince took control of the great city of Gao in the upper Niger in AD 1009. His name was Zakasi or Koso. Up to this time, all the kings of Ghana professed the Hebrew religion. Za. However, in the year, in this year, a radical transformation occurred. Za Kazi accepted Islam. Davidson quoting the Tariq El Fatak says that the king of Songhai or Ghana was persuaded to convert to Islam by the merchants of the city of Gao, who already had become wealthy and economically powerful. Much of Ghana's trade was maintained with the Muslims of the North. The North Africans were ardent Mohammedans in their day and economics and religion were co partners operating concretely in the city of Gao. If there is no condemnation of Zakazi for his conversion to Islam, there is a justification for his action. The Muslims were dominating Ghana's vital trade links in North Africa and the Sahara, and it was good for Ghana's security to be recognized as having a Mohammedan king. Concerning Islam in the Western Sudan, Basil Davidson makes the following observation. Islam reaches the markets of the Western Sudan by at least the ninth century, but it makes little initial impact. The rulers of Ghana do not accept Islam as one of their state religions. Only at the beginning of the 11th century are there a few such conversions, the earliest of any importance of which we know being that of the king of Gao. Traditionally in 1010, followed by that of the king of Kanem Bornu in 1086. Davidson says, these are tactical conversions. These kings are Muslim only in name, motivated as much by commercial convenience as by appreciation of the political and religious achievements and teaching of Islam. In spite of the fact that the kings of Ghana professed Islam, many of the inhabitants remain Jews. El Bekri, the Muslim writer wrote about Ghana in 1067. The king of Ghana in his day was Tek Amenin, who came to the throne A.D. 1062. El Bekri says that the king of Ghana, Tenkamenin, was the ruler of a great empire and he was able to organize an army of 200,000 men. 
in the 11th century, a Mohammedan people from the Northwest invaded the Ogdagast within the empire of Ghana. These invaders were called the Almorovides. By the year of 1076 AD, Abu Bakr, the leader of the Almorovides, captured the capital of Ghana. However, the Islamic Judean king was allowed to maintain his throne. Tinkamenon paid tribute to Abu Bakr. At this time, Gao or Gago, the capital of Ghana, was separated into two cities. The first one was the residence of the king. This city contained a fortress which was surrounded by a wall. The second city contained 12 mosques in which the Mohammedan merchants could settle or wait until they transacted their business. This description given by El Bekri leaves us with the impression that the city of the king's residence was probably inhabited mainly by Judeans because there was a great distinction between the king's residence and the residence of the Mohammedans. In the city of Gao, the Islamic religion was influential. Only a Muslim could be king. When a new king ascended the throne, three royal imper imperial emblems constituting the Quran, a sword, and a ring were received by the king. Ahmed Baba, a native of Songhai, dates the beginning of Islam in Ghana after the year of 1010. El Bekri designates the then reigning king as Kanda. Barth says that he is most probably identical with the Islamic Judean king Zabayak or Bayer Koi Kema of Ahmad Baba, the third succeeding king of Zakazi. All right, family, that was our little nip and sip and dip at the wisdom of the diaspora of the Judeans. And see, we have the appearance of a character, El Dad, the Danite, who is giving the story of the other tribes of the house of the nation of Israel. And so the Judeans were Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. And Eldad brought up Naphtali and Gad and the other tribes who had been in the land of Africa for some time and still followed the Mosaic laws. So there is a very important historical link there were the tribes of the northern house of Israel who, after leaving the Assyrian captivity, also before time came into the land of Africa and set up kingdoms and nations and provinces and empires. And as al Dead migrated across the land of Ham, which is called Africa, and met with the Ghanaian states and the Algerian inhabitants, he began to fill in the story of the lost tribes of the house of Israel. And we also see how the pervasion of Islam invaded Northern and Sub-Saharan Africa and how a lot of the Judeans converted to Islam, either by trade, necessity, war, or captivity. Oh yes, family. And so, as indicated, we are filling in 
those years and centuries of history after we fled our homeland in the Holy Land of Jerusalem and filtered into the interiors of the African continent. So we see not all of the brown so-called black people in Africa are native Africans. There is a vast population of Israelites intermingled in the populations of the native Africans on the continent. And family, we will continue, Lord willing, with filling in this history and bridging that gap from the American soil back to the western shores of the African continent, central and southern. And family, my acknowledgments of appreciation and thanks for you joining me in these presentations as we continue to expand and expound and mentally marinate on these concepts of greatness and family. This is the slave trade, the Judean diaspora part four. And my continuous petitions and prayer for your care and safety to the 12 tribes scattered abroad and to my brothers and sisters of the world, my blessings of peace, harmony, safety and security as we persevere and endure so that we may overcome and be right, righteous and ready. And family, until we are together again, this is Revelations. Unveiled. Detroit. The Book of Deuteronomy, Chapter 7, Verses 6 through 9. For we are a holy people unto the Lord our God. The Lord our God has chosen us to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon us, nor choose us because we were more in number than any people, for we were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved us, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn to our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has the Lord brought us out with a mighty hand and redeemed us out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Verse nine, know therefore that the Lord, our God, he is God the faithful God, which keeps covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. The book of Joel, chapter two, verse 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed. And to the scattered tribes, here is your promise of comfort book of John chapter 3 verses 14 through 17 into Isaiah chapter 45 verse 17 and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish 
but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Isaiah 45, 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. Mm-hmm. 